Who are you? I'm Cesar Castro, aka C's. What do you do? I'm a producer, audio engineer, I like to say audio designer, and just like making art. I feel like I started when I was 15. I randomly found FL Studio, the producers know, but that was like the first one I really got into at a young age. I feel like when I started making beats then, it just felt like a video game. Ever since then, bro, I just wanted to be the best at that game. That's what it always felt like. So I just kept trying, doing different things, watching all the videos. And once I realized I was doing that at like 17, I feel like, bro, if I'm like so folk invested in this now, why should I like ever stop? You know, why let school or like certain things like dictate how much I care about this? You know, so I was like, stay on this, like keep this, you know, it's, I always felt like it was like a God-given thing. Like, you found it and you love it. And so at 17, I really realized that. And at 18, I was like, what do I want to do in school? And at 18, I was like telling people, like, yo, I want to go to school and see where it goes. But deep down, that's when I knew I want to figure out how to make, like, music and audio, like, a su successful career. So you're mainly self-taught? Uh, yeah, 100%, you know, like YouTube videos. Everyone knows like Producer Grind and um, like the FL Studios, the Ableton people out there on YouTube that just like do all the tutorials, so. We watch a lot of those like um, genius producer breakdowns. Of, yeah, of course, right, you know what I mean? And that's out of love, like not like, oh, like how can I, like you, I just do that. Then I just did that to watch it. Like it was a fun video, not knowing I was learning from them things and even like Kenny Beats, you know, he's got the cave, like people know. But not only being self-taught, I like, when I turned 18, I uh, went to Purdue Northwest College and wasn't feeling that at all, you know, regular school. I Like I knew I had to do the audio, so I transferred after my first year, went to SAE Institute in Chicago, which is like an all audio school. So that's with music and entertainment. So that's what like broadened my like, uh, senses and audio like not just music like pro like uh producing like podcasts and the radio broadcast and all that different stuff like i got into so it just kept building like from 15 to 18 like was one chapter and then 18 to now it's just like did it change how you listen to music and podcasts like forever after that like now yeah. you're just hearing and wondering how they made it how they recorded it how they mixed it no i'm a geek for sure like i'm an audio geek now you know what i mean like even with some of these interviews, you know, I'm watching, I'm like thinking of the audio and all the TV shows I watch. You developed and, a much better ear than some people. Yeah, like it's just like I, for, I care about it. You know what I mean? Like I, I just like have a niche for it. Like, mm. but I think it's important to embrace that. Like I, I really embrace it because I think you show love, like the things you love, people are gonna like take that and love what they love too more. So it's like you show love and like love spreads. It's like mm. contagious. I definitely am hawking down these artists, you know. I feel like some of the artists I get that hit me up, it's really random. And a lot of times it's more artists I would honestly say aren't the most professional. But the people I hawk down, I know like I feel a connection. So I think I, I definitely trust, you know, you can only really trust your own senses. So, but when I'm uh, going on Twitter and all these social medias, like trying to find these people, you know, I really like, like really like pay attention, go deep down to the sound of like what they do and how I could help them and like make a even better song they already are making. But when people hit me up, for the most part on the music side, it feels like I just need a producer. So is it easy for you to sonically vision what an artist is looking for? No, I wouldn't say it's easy all the time. You know, it's different, you know, just like you making a video, like every every shoot is different, you know, the 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 vibe of the room and so sometimes we make some right away uh some days like we can't make nothing that's just how it is though it's like a i feel like every time you're creating something it's a tug of war battle so but the only thing you could do is try your hardest to make the best outcome like i hate being uh selfish and like trying to make what i like but it's like a collab it's a duo effort you know to make what's like like you said sonically pleasing to both of us so it's definitely a battle of like, 
letting them express themselves, but also expressing myself at the same time. I feel like I'm one of them people, once a week, I'm listening to somebody completely different. I'm trying to, like, I love new, so. Like, Jordan Ward has putting out a new sound that I love, you know what I mean, Smino. Like, I love them grooves, you know, I'm a big R&B head. Like, this week, though, I'm not gonna lie, I've been on, like, straight up, like, 90s vibes. Of music Soul Child, um, I Just Wanna Sing, like, greatest album of that fucking time, I'm telling you. Uh, the Alchemist, you know, I love them old samples, I'm a sample head. But going back to the soul samples, there's the Sacred Souls, who's an amazing soul band. And going into that, I love like hearing just instrumentals and uh, instruments. So Miles Davis, like I love hearing him on the jazz trumpet. But bro, everybody, everybody's an inspiration, you know. I, I, I just gotta learn who everybody is. So do you work with uh, sampling more soul music than anything? That's the that's definitely what hits me the most, you know, because you could turn it slow and make it something really deep and impactful, but then you could also speed it up and make it something like really bouncy and just super fun. It, it, it definitely hits my heart the hardest. So I feel like I could represent myself with audio in a lot of ways other than the music. So like filming, you know, I feel like I could still make songs within the music, let alone I could still help like mix the, the microphones and the audio, you know, them boom mics and little things just to make it sound the best it can because like I said I feel like just the audio as a whole I'm a geek about it when I watch TV the movies radio so I could definitely use my skills in the music to better them other uh, types of production would you ever try to score movies oh 100% that's the goal you know what I mean the biggest ones too I want to I want to bro the main goal would to be would to have like a song in a film or, or like have a score and it go like get a Grammy Oscar you know what I mean like notice what are some common roadblocks that you find yourself running into? Honestly, the biggest one, like my biggest challenge, I feel like is burnout. You know what I mean? Especially using different outlets to create yourself. Like you're always kind of on it with ideas, let alone everyone's trying to ask you, like, what's your schedule, how to plan it out. And just always using your mind. It could get really stressful. But literally today I seen a, I seen this video of like this uh, therapist and she was studying she was studying burnout and like most people thinks that your burnout is you doing so many things to the point where you're kind of just like, you can't let nothing else out. But in fact, it's, she's saying her studies show like it really means you're losing impact. Meaning like you're kind of losing like you're, a bit, like you're doing so many things with little input or like output. So I think um, I'm just learning how to do minimal things, like not do as much work, but still have a bigger impact in the things I do, you know? So that's the way I kind of beat that burnout and feeling like I'm doing more than I should. Any tips you'd give to um, any new producers or beat makers? Yeah, honestly, my biggest tip for all of them, the producers, the beat makers, the engineers, because honestly, they're all different jobs and different focuses. But for all of them, I feel like everyone can learn how to just take control of what you're doing and what you're working on, you know, execution. Like, what your mind and what you do deep down want your end goal to be, like, make sure that's the only thing on your mind. Like, really trying to reach out and get that, you know, never settling for, uh, never settle for the outcomes you got, you know. Really make what you want happen and uh, meet as many people as you can, you know. Um, people are your outlet to learning and growing, so. What's your favorite part about doing this? Um, the people, like I said, yeah, the people, dude. The people I meet, um, even from you, Izzy, like everybody I meet is showing me something, you know, making me feel more powerful than I, I already am. So the more people you meet, um, I feel like the bigger your life will change. What's a life lesson that you've learned or relearned this year? A life lesson I've learned, honestly, probably like with life itself, you got to take control. I would say is like the biggest thing I learned because the more you don't take care of yourself, the things you got going on, the deeper your hole is going to get. So there's a lot of times I feel like I was down or like I didn't like give the things I was doing enough impact and I wasn't meeting enough people. I wasn't like producing as much as I know I really could have. But the more I really like took action was like, you know, what, we're going to get these things done. I really feel like the most like impact I got from 
like all the things I was doing and making. So if you just do more than you really think you can. Do you see yourself still doing this in the next five to 10 years? The stuff I do, yeah. I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life till I die. What are you most grateful for? Uh, everything, all the things God's given me, all the things that he's let me see, my family, shoot you Izzy for helping me for the things I get, interview itself, um, all my homies. Um, right now my boy Zahir for putting me on his uh, little EP, Chaos Street, man. Appreciate him too a lot. All the people that's like giving me uh, opportunity in the audio. Um, but yeah, literally everything, man.